Welcome to this episode of Captains of Industry. My name is Makeda Mahario, and today we are joined by a seasoned economist. She spent time working and teaching in Switzerland. She also had stints at the National Institute of Statistics here in Rwanda and even at the President's office. Her name is Dr. Diane Karasisi, and she is the CEO of the leading award winning bank, Bank of Kigali. Thanks so much for joining us on the show today. Pleasure. You know, you know we're, we're going to talk uh, just a bit about uh, how you got here, but mostly about what's your vision now that you are at the helm of such a powerful institution here in Rwanda. Uh, we spoke a little bit in the intro about uh, the different positions that you've held. What do you think prepared you the most for taking over the helm of Bank, Bank of Kigali now? now. Hmm. I, I think it's, it's mainly my, my education but also my early education as a, a young child, as a young adult, uh, or someone uh, who you know, were, was raised in a family with, that was very patriotic. So you know, as, as the family, we always wanted to do something big for our country. Uh, we had uh, big dreams for the country. And I'm happy that today I can actually have an impact. Right, and make that contribution. You know, you did spend time working in Switzerland and teaching in Switzerland. What would you say is the major difference between working here and there? And is there anything that you took from there that you brought over to Rwanda? Yeah, I, th I think working uh, in Switzerland, everything is organized. Everything is already built and designed by other people. And, and the, the major difference here is that everything is to be built. You can really reinvent, create things, build things, and this makes uh, uh, the, the job more exciting because you can have a better and bigger impact. And, and what I've learned is you know, just the discipline in, 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 in working, in, in doing everything people do in Switzerland with a lot of discipline. Uh, timeliness is very important, and I, I try to you know, keep that discipline in everything we are doing uh, here at Bank of Kigali. And I always tell my colleagues, when the meeting starts at 8, it starts at 8, not at 8.01, 8.05. And I think this discipline is important, especially in, in, in our industry where, you know, actually we charge people for time. Right. So I think time is very important. And absolutely to be a leader as well. Uh, is there any moment that you consider to be a turning point in your career that you think maybe led you to where you are today? I think, I think moving back to Rwanda was a turning point, not only in my career, but in my life, uh, because I had never lived in Rwanda before. Uh, I was born abroad, I you know, went to school abroad, I lived abroad for very many years. So moving back to Rwanda was a turning point to, you know, in everything in my life, career-wise, uh, even in my personal life. So uh, I really felt I could do things that I could not do elsewhere. I could have a bigger impact, I could contribute more. And I also felt I could be myself, a hundred percent. I could, you know, I didn't want, need to be like other people. I could really be myself, a Rwandan who's, uh, you know, who wants to contribute to the development of the country. Right. And this is quite a big uh, contribution. You know, Bank of Kigali, like I said in the beginning, it is a leading bank, but there are also different uh, sections of the bank. There's the BK Tech House, there's insurance. Uh, how do you manage to sort of reel it all in and, and lead everything? So, so I think we've ev ev evolved into a group with uh, many uh, lines of businesses and, and uh, what we want is to be a one-stop uh, shop for every financial service that everyone, uh, an individual, a company would need in Rwanda. And uh, the way I manage it is have to have the right people. Uh, having the right people, we have a very good team uh, leading our insurance business. Uh, what we try to do is to make sure all our clients know about uh, the product and services we're offering at the uh, insurance business. Tech House is, is complementing us with uh, the technology required and everything we're doing as part of digital transformation is concerned. And we even have BK Capital, which is our, you know, the newest subsidiary, our investment bank. And we truly want to have uh, one brand, uh, one speed and efficiency of, of service uh, we offer to our client. And we're trying, of course, to get a bigger uh, share of the wallet of our clients. If they were spending money in uh, another insurance company or they were getting advisory for other businesses, we try to get a, a big share of, of the wallet and give them a more efficient service. Right. So it seems as though innovation has to be a large part of uh, your job as a leader of, of this institution. 
How do you manage to keep up with the innovations and to make sure that you know you are creating things that that people will need and use? I think that the biggest part of innovation is uh, having a lot of curiosity and you know keep learning and, and looking for how things could be done but in a better way. And, and this is what, what I do. When I meet clients, I ask them, you know, how the service? Have you been, been to uh, the insurance business? What could you do better? I try to read a lot. I think social media helps a lot. Uh, I follow many of these, uh, you know, important resources when it comes to uh, financial industry in general. And I, I, keep, I keep challenging ourselves. How, what can we do better? How can we do things faster? How can, you, uh, can we be uh, more efficient, even cost-wise, etc.? And that's what keeps uh, people, uh, the people around me, looking for better ways to do business, uh, better ways to be efficient, etc. So curiosity, I think, is it's very important for me now because I, I need to constantly challenge the status quo. Are there innovations or are there any specific innovations that you find has defined your career or any specific innovations to speak of? Hmm. I think that the main, uh, what I've brought to uh, Bank of Kigali when I joined was to, to look at us as a provider of financial services, not only banking services. And today finance, financial services is mainly driven by technology. So us uh, setting up BK Tech House was in that line. I think that's the bigger innovation. The others are small in uh, you know, s small areas. But I really want us to be the brand uh, everyone would think of when they want a uh, financial service, uh, be it uh, life insurance, uh, general insurance, banking, lending, savings, uh, advisory. I think this is really what I'm trying to have us do and do efficiently. Right. BK is growing at this moment, and we've seen in the around the region, across the continent, actually, a lot of activity in the banking sector. Uh, but specifically in the region, we've seen big mergers, we've seen new policies and regulations that have been impacting banks um, quite uh, uh, impactful in, in that area. How do you manage to focus your energy in a way uh, that can help the bank to grow and, and can help you keep up with the competition? So, so, so for me, I really believe uh, we have a competitive advantage. Being Bank of Kigali, we are almost the only local Rwanda Rwandan bank uh, in Rwanda. So keeping that proximity to our clients, I think it's important. And again, as I was saying, we haven't been looking at uh, m and We've been, of course, looking at the m and activity in the sector. But for us, we want to keep continue growing organically. And as I was saying, we really want to grow uh, the, sh the, the share of, our, uh, of the wallet, our share of the wallet of our clients. So making sure we can offer more services, uh, more value, can bring more value to our clients. And this is how we want to grow uh, our business. And uh, another thing we're trying to do is to look at uh, new segments of, of uh, the population that have been traditionally underserved. We are looking at farmers, we are looking at students, we are looking at informal traders. We're saying, you know, these people need financial services. How can we bring these financial services to them in a very efficient way, in a very affordable way? And also, of course, give them the best customer experience. So that's why I think what we're doing, making sure we keep uh, our competitive advantage amongst the, client, the clientele that we have today and grow our share of the wallet and then look at new segments of, of the population that have been underserved in the past. Right. Uh, you just touched on something that a lot of people are paying attention to right now and that uh, even telecoms, everyone's trying to get into this uh, space, financial inclusion, bringing more people um, into the banking sector. What work is BK doing specifically in that regard? So I think what we are doing is, uh, as a group, we are trying to find a way to build an ecosystem around some uh, sectors. Agriculture, for example, has been you know, the, the, the first uh, choice of BK where we're building an ecosystem. We started with BK uh, Tech House, building a, a system where we have already more than two million farmers registered. And this allows uh, the digitalization of the subsidy, subsidy scheme of the government. So now farmers can get the subsidy on the phone. And we've been able to not only register the farmers, but also have all the um, agro dealers in the country. We have more than 1,200 agro dealers who have become our agents. So now the next step was to build uh, a wallet, which uh, was launched in May, 
We have already about 200,000 farmers registered on the wallet and transacting every day. And we are telling farmers, join our ecosystem, you'll be able to access uh, loans because we want to be able to uh, qualify farmers for small uh, loans. But this will be loans only for inputs. We want them to, buy, to be able to buy more inputs to improve their, their productivity. And we, we really want to see all the flows in agriculture from uh, the, the subsidy that is given by government to the lending that we can do uh, to ensure they can have more inputs, uh, more fertilizers, etc. We also want to see the, the produce they have, how is it commercialized, etc. So we can have the whole value chain of agriculture. Us being able to capture the whole value chain will give us a lot of visibility and will allow us to increase lending to agriculture because it's been uh, for the past uh, couple of years, it's been less than 5% of total lending to the private sector. Yet agriculture is about 30% of our GDP. So we're saying this mismatch, we need to work on that. And looking at a, an ecosystem, having a solution that is ecosystem-based is the best way to tackle that. Yeah. What goes into launching an innovation like this? Where does it start? What, where does the work come in? And how does it get to the rollout? So it, it starts with an idea, with a uh, you know, couple of colleagues brainstorming and, and talking and discussing and speaking. And when, at some point, the idea, the idea becomes a concept beyond just a dream, it becomes a concept. And then, of course, you have to you know, have many teams, some people looking at design, some people looking at actual, actual development because, because these are digital products, some people looking at risk and compliance because we're in a regulated uh, sector, we want to make sure every product is well in line with the regulation. So all this has to take time in a coordinated manner and without taking too much time, because you know, we are for profit business. We want to take time, obviously, in design and development, but we want to take the product as soon as possible to, to market so we can start uh, transacting and making money. So it has taken us about six months, the process from the, the, the design to the launch of the wallet. We already have about 200,000 farmers, and our target is one million farmers by end of next year. So now I think the biggest focus of the coming months will be a lot of marketing and PR to get all these people onboarded and to tell people about the, the, the benefits of them joining uh, the, our eco agriculture ecosystem uh, because we believe we can you know, help them grow and we as a bank can also grow at the same time. Right. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We have come to that time. Of course, you are watching Captains of Industry. We are sitting down with the CEO of Bank of Kigali, Dr. Diane Karasisi. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to Captains of Industry. Today we are sitting down with Dr. Diane Karasisi. She is the CEO of Bank of Kigali. You know, earlier we spoke about some different things, your journey getting to where you are now, some of the different innovations of uh, the bank that you face or that you have come up with um, and implemented. But now let's get into um, some of the things about the leadership aspect of it. Uh, you know, one of the things that leaders in the industry had uh, one of the luxuries we can call it that they had um, before you was that they didn't have to worry so much about cybersecurity. Um, what are some ways that the industry has changed while you've been involved and some ways that you've had to grow with it and, and learn with it? So I think that that has become uh, a big part of, of what we do we even you know uh, created a separate department in charge of uh, information security uh, and because we are a regulated uh, company, we now have to, we need to have an external cybersecurity access assessment every year. So this uh, audit comes with a lot of recommendations that we have to implement. So this gives me uh, uh, some guidelines around what needs to be done. And I also I'm able to uh, hold my teams accountable because I have a you know, list of things that we're supposed to implement. 
and then I can I can tell them so these are the we can have a plan for the year. These are the, the, the new solutions, the awareness that we need to do uh, in this year. So it's been uh, costly because this involve it involves a lot of uh, costs, but at the same time, when you think of the risks that are involved, you feel uh, you know every investment is uh, wor worth it. At the end of the day, as a bank, we, we trade on trust. People need to, you know, come and, and put their savings with us because they believe uh, saving with Bank of Kigali is safe. Uh, we can make money, etc. So for us, it's absolutely critical to continue building that trust. And now, today, I think the security round is no longer physical security of the cash that we have in our vault. Is, uh, is the cyber security and we have to invest a lot in that. Right. Are there any other big changes that have occurred in the industry while you've been involved that you've had to sort of adjust to? So I, I think the, the big changes came even, even before I joined the bank with uh, telcos, uh, you know, launching financial services, mobile money, etc. It's been, a, uh, I think, a product that everyone has. So we have to keep up with that. So we know that uh, not only banks today as are offering, uh, providing financial services. Uh, there are fintechs out there, there are telcos trying to, you know, uh, take a part, a, a part of, of our business. So we have to keep, um, you know, providing a, a very good customer experience. And we also have to get into that business of fintech and, and, and telcos, and that's what, what we are doing with the wallet that we launched. And going forward, I think it will, will remain uh, looking at where the threats can come from, uh, fintech, Maybe even you know, big uh, uh, big tech companies like Facebook or WhatsApp would come up with a financial service uh, to offer to all their uh, clientele base. So we need to be very alert and make sure our business is not only protected but continues to grow. Right, a Bank of Kigali is like I said a leading bank here in Rwanda. What contribution does it make to the economy of the country? So being the, the leading bank in the country actually comes with uh, responsibility. When you look at the, the uh, ambitious goals we have as a country, when you look at the national strategy for transformation, you have to look back and think, I'm um, the leading finan financier of, of this economy, so how do I contribute? How do I allocate uh, the lending that we do to sectors that have uh, more potential for jobs, more potential for growth? more potential for poverty reduction. So it's actually a responsibility. We don't just do transactional lending, don't just lend to people as they come. We really have to sit and say, we need to uh, optimize our contribution to the development of the country because you know, the country counts on us to finance this big project. So uh, this uh, requires me uh, in particular and uh, my colleagues, of course, to be very much in line with what the government is planning, what the country is planning to do. So we really follow in the line of government uh, to, to make sure we are, our plans and the country's plans are well aligned. What are the main challenges that you face in this, in this position? Hmm. I think that the main challenge always is around people, uh, getting the right people, uh, getting them motivated uh, to do the right things, uh, guiding change, uh, because the resistance to change is something I see every single day. Uh, because again, when, you, you, when I moved to, to, to Bank of Kigali, it was already the most successful bank, biggest bank, etc. So, so most people thought there's no need to change. We're already you know, at the top. And keep motivating people and telling them that you know, this leadership position can, <laughs> in no time, you know, we can forget about us being the leaders if we don't do the right things. It's something that I have to keep uh, you know, doing, telling people. Sometimes it's tiring. And sometimes you have to, you know, be tough. Uh, but I think the, the major challenge is around people getting them motivated, and th getting them to understand the vision, uh, getting them to accept change. Uh, I think it's the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. And you've been here since 2016. How do you manage yourself to uh, keep up with the changes, make sure that you're keeping it fresh and not get complacent because it's true, the bank is at the top position. I think it's uh, reading a lot and getting exposed to what other banks are doing. I, I spend uh, hours uh, reading of, uh, about what other banks are doing, the future of banking, uh, because I, I really believe us not being exposed or us not you know, uh, uh, knowing what's happening can affect uh, an impact in the way we run the business. 
so, so that's, that's my way of you know, being constantly learning uh, and, and knowing that things are changing. Uh, I have a big team uh, and I try to be as open as possible for everyone to bring in ideas. And I have a young team, young people who are very exposed, very ambitious and very hungry uh, for change and for business and for growth. So giving them a uh, space to express themselves is, is very important and we get actually the, uh, the best ideas we get come from them. Where do you see the future of banking? So I, I see the future of banking in digital completely. I don't think uh, banking will be a place to go. It will only be some, uh, something you do, uh, uh, mostly on your phone. Uh, because even internet banking uh, is disappearing only for corporate, but for retail, I think banking is going to be done only on the phone. And I think bank, the future of banking is personalized service. Uh, people don't, need, don't want to be treated as just a retail client. They want to be treated as me, with my savings, with my plans, uh, with my preferences. Uh, it's, it's no longer going to be a mass service that you offer you know, one product for everyone. Everyone wants a personalized product. So I see uh, data having a lot of importance uh, in, the way we, we, in, in the way we offer services. And of course, all the digital technologies from uh, uh, internet to data, artificial intelligence, I think all, all these uh, technologies will uh, uh, change the way we do banking. And are those spaces that the bank is investing in now? Absolutely, absolutely. I think data, we collect a lot of data, but so far we haven't been you know, utilizing the data to the maximum. So now we are looking at new ways of uh, doing this advanced analytics, getting insights from the data for us to uh, improve the, 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 the customer experience. And I think this is a trend that is going to continue. Right. You mentioned some of the challenges of leading, but are there any uh, setbacks that you think that the bank and maybe even the culture or the country will have to transcend in order to keep up with the ever-changing fast pace um, banking sector? I think co complacency is, is, is the biggest threat. Uh, uh, as a country, I think we've made uh, good progress. Uh, when you travel and you tell people you come from Rwanda, everyone is like, Rwanda is a great place, a great place of business. Sometimes all this praise, uh, you know, my, my fear is that we get complacent and we think we, we know better, we do things better than other people. Yet we constantly need to learn and challenge the way we, we do things. Uh, I think that that's why I think we need to re continue to mobilize our young people for them to, to know that uh, everything that has been done was good, but you still have a long way to go and things are constantly changing. So we need to adjust and adapt uh, our way, ways of doing business, our ways of life in right. general. Inevitably, there will be some people who are watching this program who are saying, I'm not there yet, but I want to be where she is. What would you have to say to them? What would be your main point of advice? Hmm. It's interesting. I think I'll, I'll, I'll tell them to be very ambitious and, and keep uh, aiming uh, for high goals. And I think personal discipline is very important in life. Uh, when you have a goal, uh, you need a plan because a goal alone, you, know, you won't get to the goal without a plan. And you need to stick to your plan and to, be, to have some personal discipline in your life. In general, I think uh, personal discipline has been important to me. And I think uh, what I want to tell, what I tell my kids and what I want to tell young people is personal discipline is very important. Uh, you know, just before we wrap up, you know, you did mention your um, need and, and passion for contributing to your country. Uh, is that what sort of keeps driving you to, to keep leading? Yes, and, and of course the, the passion for the country is there, but also seeing all these small milestones, celebrating those, keep showing us that it is possible, it's been possible in the past, it is possible and we can all aim uh, at even higher uh, goals in the future. So I think that, that, is, uh, that keeps me up and I keep saying, if we've been able to, uh, to achieve this, that means we can do better. Because I always feel uh, when you've achieved something, it shows you that you know, the next uh, milestone is also possible. And yeah, I think, I think we, have, we still have a lot to do, uh, but we have uh, the right people. Uh, we have, I think, the right um, 
uh, mindset, you know, the people want change, they want uh, to grow, they want to develop, they want to transform the country. And, you know, we have the right leadership. So I'm, I'm very bullish for Rwanda. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Diane Karasisi. Thank you for joining us. You've been watching a CNBC Africa special, Captains of Industry. We sat down and spoke about the vision and the journey of Dr. Diane Karasisi along her way on becoming the leader of one of the biggest banks in Rwanda. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Makeda Mahadio, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.